What's going on college football fans? It is K-Spade the Prospect, back today with a brand new episode of It's All About The You. Because, you know, it's all about the you. As you guys can see, man, we're about to do battle against the UNC Tar Heels. Before we get into the game, I wanted to look at the matchup, and as you can see, we got Kurt Herbstreet on our side, we got numbers on our side, but I want to go a little bit deeper. I want to show you North Carolina started their season off with a win over Old Dominion, lost to Ohio State, lost to FSU, lost to Oklahoma, beat USA, whoever the hell that is, and this team is still ranked, talking about underachieving. The only wins that they got are against teams that are sub-500. Just, you know, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Now let's go over and look at Miami's side. We started our season off with a loss at the hands of the Crimson Tide. I hate to admit it, but we bounced back. We beat Ohio State. We beat Pitt. We beat Duke. We beat Virginia Tech. We ready for whatever. Let's get over here and see what's going down. Now we are on the road in today's game, so we'll be up in North Carolina. And that's cool with us, you know. I just don't believe these guys. Now they must have started the regular season off ranked like in the top five for them to take all the losses that they've taken and still be ranked so high both teams are known for having high power offense if you look at miami we're averaging 39 points a game and just shy of 500 yards of total offense a game let's get down to the field man i'm ready the coin toss goes underway miami wins the coin toss he likes to kick the football off so that they can start the second half off with the football. That's kind of what Miami is known to do. And I want to get to the field and see how this first drive goes for UNC because right now I don't believe them. Now Miami is doing something new. You're going to see them do it a lot in this game. They are blitzing the safeties. Now Miami has two very good safeties back there. So they're going to bring them in the box to try to add pressure to, you know, the pass rush. Basically, opposing teams' quarterbacks, oh my God, has been having too much time in the pocket, and that's the way Miami feel like they've been giving up so many passing yards. That was the only area in the matchup that UNC did a better job of. You know, how many passing yards a game they allow. So Miami's trying something new. So far, it seems to work pretty good. We've seen Jaquan Johnson get back there and get a sack. And on this play, the backers was blitzed, but the pressure came right up the gut, and the defensive tackle, Josh Fletcher, was able to share this block and get to the QB as he tried to escape the pass rush. You ain't going nowhere. Third and forever, UNC has time in the pocket. That's one of those pass plays where, eh, you really didn't think that guy was gonna catch that ball and turn north and south and get that first down. We get our first look at the Miami offense that you guys already know is gonna be a heavy dose of Mark Walton handed out today for multiple reasons. For one, we really believe this guy's the best running back in college football. For two, this guy's a Heisman candidate. We wanna make sure this guy get his touches. Also, running the football, man, that sets the tone. It wears the defense down. It makes the defense creep into the box. So many great things happen when you come out and establish the run. UNC was ready though. Gotta give them credit. They did a great job of kind of stifling the run early on. Made Miami go to the air, which Miami's all right with, and they end up continuing this drive. Now, second and short right here. Josh Horn with time in the pocket, throws a beautiful pass. It's gonna be tough to guard Derek Clark man to man. He is an exceptional route runner. And you see right there, he put the cleats in the turf, Cut on a dime, and that's thing you know that man was wide open. They go right back to the air right here, this time John Rice. Now Rice is emerging as one of these guys that's being talked about a lot. Miami puts this guy in the slot, but don't think for a second he don't have the talent to be a one or a two on this field. He's got the talent. Miami is moving the football with ease. They are inside the red zone for the first time today. Quick read to Lawrence Cage on the, on the quick slant. Nine yards on the play. Hey, Miami, let's get it done. Few plays later, man, Mark Walton walks us up to the end zone. Easy peasy. It's all about the U. Miami starts this game off with a score. 7-0 Kane. Let's go. Sebastian over there showing out for the crowd. The crowd do not like Sebastian. Sebastian, this ain't Miami, fam. You better go over to the student section. Now, it's pretty normal for college coaches to script the plays on the first drive of the game, and those scripted plays really didn't go too well. That means that Miami's been in the film room. They've been studying. Now, they come out right here. These are the nine scripted plays where you got to get in the playbook. And, hey, Miami don't seem to be prepared. That's a great run. 30-plus yards on the pickup. UNC is past midfield. They are attacking this defense with quick passes. Now, I told you guys early on. Miami's going to do some different things in the blitz game, in this particular game, trying to get pressure on this QB. And UNC does what you're supposed to do when you're getting blitz. They got some quick reads. The quarterback doesn't even have to monitor the field. He's just taking the snap, throwing quick reads, and just like that, they right outside the goal line. 
we need a defensive stand from Miami right here. We need something. No other offense has been to move all game. Of course, they're going to stay with it. The thing about this, it doesn't necessarily allow Miami to get the right personnel on the field. Second and goal, Miami's bringing a lot of people into the box. They are expecting run. I don't know if they was expecting the read option, though. And the QB, Anthony Ratliff, gets into the end zone to tie this game up. And he's celebrating. The kids say he eating. Okay. I ain't kidding, it's a lot of football left, I'm just saying. Miami offense is back on the field. Four minutes to go before the half. They have enough time to possibly put more points on the board. Remember what I told you at the start of this video. Miami gets it back to start the third. So if they score here, they're really in good shape. Well, even if they don't score here, as long as they don't allow the Tar Heels to score here, they're still in really good shape. Now, you know Miami's implemented this read option. They started doing this last year with Malik Rozier. Josh Horn is definitely for it, and Miami has success with it. They continue to run the football, eating clock, moving down the field, keeping the chains moving, and they're inside the red zone. Now, watch this here. They go play action to Walton. Ace double tight. The tight end in motion really made it look like a run play for Walton. They threw it to the underneath tight end. Beautiful play. Whoever designed that, kudos to you, my friend. And Walton right here just wants the touchdown more than anybody in a blue shirt wants to stop him. Gets into the end zone, dragging a couple Tar Heels, gave somebody the right hand of fellowship, and just like that, we got a 14-7 game out here. Now, it's two minutes on the clock. Two-minute drill is definitely in order. I don't know if UNC's got that because the way they've been having success has been short passes. I don't know if they got anything in their arsenal that's going to get them 80 yards down the field in under two minutes, but we'll see. Second and 10, Ratliff, we know this guy's athletic. He tries to run for it. The boy got hit at the end of that play. I think that's Junior Junior over there who hit him. But run, oh! Look at these canes, boy. They ain't playing no games out here, yo. Running the football and quarterback sneaking is not going to get you what you want to do. Instead, what's going to happen is it's going to put you in a situation where you got to punt and you got to give Miami an opportunity to possibly put even more points on the board. They kick it to the dangerous kick returner, John Rice. He picks up almost 30 on the kick return, and just like that, Miami's in great field position. Look at this. Mark Walton only had six carries for seven yards in the first quarter. UNC did a great Great job. Oh my God, Jackson. How do you drop that? Josh Horn has got to be pissed off with his tight end after that one. Threw him a beautiful pass. He just couldn't hold on to it. Now Miami does go back right here. Pick up a 17-yard reception. John Rice is everywhere, man. Special teams guru. This guy is going to be... I don't even want to tell you. Just watch. Continue to watch. John Rice, this guy will be talked about. He's going to be playing on Sunday soon. 10 seconds on the clock, man. Miami tries to go with a nice little wide receiver screen. This is something new. I haven't seen Miami run this play all year. Didn't quite work for them. And they end up having to settle for another three. So at the end of the first half, Miami is in complete control. Neither team has a turnover. The passing yards favor Miami. The rushing yards favor Miami. Hey, I mean, it's a Miami type of day. Third quarter action, I told you guys, hey, Miami is looking forward to this situation. This gives them an opportunity to put this game away. And I don't care how much time is on the clock. Mentally, when you're playing from this far behind at home in front of the home crowd, I don't know. You know, some people can quit. They can crack under pressure. Walton on the counter right here. Beautiful run. If he could turn the corner, oh, the shoestring tackle slowed him up just enough that somebody else could come over and push him out of bounds. Mark Walton started this game slow, but, man, that boy rolling now. He is rolling. And speaking of rolling, Josh Horn is always a threat to take off with it. He got criticized earlier in this season. People said he was a running back playing at the quarterback position. He silenced some of the criticism with his arm. Still, the kid can run. I mean, he might be one of the fastest guys on this Miami team, and that speaks volumes because Miami has speed. We're going to have to talk to the uh, Jackson. This tight end is goofing. That play right there, he sold out the play. He quit on the route. you got to run the route all the way out, kid. What is up? 20-7 to seven is your score after another field goal is made for Miami. Tar Heels still going with the quick reads. It is working somewhat. Once again, I just don't know if it's enough time for that to get them where they want to be. Jaquan Johnson gets to the quarterback for the second time today. The new blitzes that they're bringing in seems to be working. I see you, Manny Diaz. I see you. I like it. Third and long. Beautiful pass. Beautiful catch. Wow. I don't even know how he got that pass in there. It was on a rope. Beautiful pass. Tar Heels with this run right here. Man, the Canes out here hitting, y'all. With that run right there, the Tar Heels are back in the red zone. They're definitely not quitting this game. I like it. I like it. 
They got a receiver across the middle. He takes a big time hit from the free safety, Willie Irvin. It's going to be really close. The call on the field is touchdown. We're going to have to look at it. It was pretty close. I'm not sure. Let's see what the replay shows. Beautiful pass. Irvin gets there. Ooh, I, I don't know. I don't know. Miami didn't challenge it. They decided this late in the game, you don't want to be in a situation where you need that timeout. And even if they get it, they still down six. Miami don't, don't really fear this team at all. Offensively, they got to take care of business here. Three points put on the board on both of the last two drives. Miami needs six here. At least I feel like they do. I feel like they need six, seven. Hell, I don't know. Maybe eight, two-point conversion. Anyway, fourth quarter action, folks. Kane's getting it done. Still running the football. The backup, Neek, Leak. Leak is what the student session will be screaming if we was in Miami right now. He's won over uh, fans and coaches both alike. With the limited amount of carries he gets, when he gets in, he makes the most of the opportunity. Third and goal from about the five-yard line. Look at Walton. When you get close to that end zone, man, Walton, he like a, a bloodhound, man. He can just smell the path to the end zone. It's not always pretty, but you cannot stop him. He gets in the end zone again. Miami elects to go for two, and you got Derek Clark on the drag route right across the middle. Nobody's going to stop him. That's a quick read. I like that. I like that. Miami, I'm just saying, you might want to go to that more often. It seemed to work. 28-14 is your score with five minutes to go. We're talking about two scores, man, against the Tar Heel team that basically have put up two scores in three quarters. I'm not saying don't be afraid. I'm just saying it's highly unlikely for the Tar Heels to get this done. I'm just saying. I don't know, y'all. Don't judge me. I might be biased. Beautiful pass right here, though. They almost get a first down on that play. We jump ahead. They end up getting the first, and they go back to running the football. Derrick Henderson might have caught the Canes off guard right there. Seven yards on his first carry of the day. Who is he? Like, Miami looking around like, who is this guy? I know it ain't going to work, though. Ant Ratliff, you're not going to just take off running on this defense. As you can see, Miami calls the spy right here. UNC goes screen, and Miami was right there waiting on it. That's that game film study, baby. Fourth and eight. They got to get this first down if they want a chance to stay in this game. That's another beautiful pass. They keep attacking these sidelines, and the Miami DBs keep allowing these passes to go. Come on, y'all. Do not choke it up. Don't choke it up. Ant Ratliff on the sneak right here. Miami had the spy right there ready for him. He still picked up about six or seven on the, on the play, but once again, the clock is ticking. The clock is not on their side. Third and short, that would be the safety blitz. Willie Irvin and actually one of the backers both got there at the same time. But you see the pressure that they're getting with this safety blitz. That's a free safety in the backfield. That's crazy. Fourth and short, UNC's got to go for it. Ratliff wants to run again. Miami's ready for that. i tell you what you're not going to do. You're not just going to run. We got the spy on it. We're ready. Beautiful stop right there, folks. It's two minutes left on the clock, but we're going to go ahead and draw the curtains. Miami comes to UNC and dominates. Got a great game from Mark Walton, who had 170-something on the ground and had another 15 or 20 yards receiving through the air. A quick glance at the stat sheet, you'll think Miami didn't have much success passing the football, but in reality, they just had so much success running the football that they just ran it. Great game, great win for the Kings. Folks, that is all I got for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, drop that like. If you're new, hit subscribe. Tell a friend and tell a friend, man. That's all I got for today. I'll catch you guys on the next one, all right? Peace.